Hey, I'm Jay from the Cub Scouts. Welcome to a game called The Park. Now, I saw in the pictures that there's like some squirrel mascot chasing you in a big abandoned amusement park. I don't really know what's up with that, but we're about to figure it out right now. If you guys cool with that, you down with that? Everybody get ready and buckle up, because here we go! Where's Mr. Bear? I haven't seen Mr. Bear, Callum. Yeah, shut up, kid. Shut your dumb ass up. Kid's always asking questions. Where's Mr. Bear? Stay in the car. We'll go and ask information. Where's Mr. Bear? That's what you sound like, Callum. Bro, look like he still need to be in a car seat kicking his feet up like that. Come on, dude. Okay, I can examine this plaque, even though I don't really want to. Callum was born the day this place opened. Oh, yeah? This Tell me more things I don't care about. This is place in the world. Okay, let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. How do I How do I get off this cringe? So, we have to find Mr. Bear. Because I know that his ass is gonna be crying all the way home. I'm a father. I know these things, okay? Who's this dude? He must be evil because my girl is tripping out. Hey, Lorraine. Lorraine. Lorraine gang. Don't blame yourself, Lorraine. People Lorraine gang. Shout out things Lorraine all gang. the time. Take what a is deep wrong with breath. Me? And think about the last place you saw your son's teddy bear. Hey, stop. I think your boy just ran into the park. I'll unlock the gates for you. Why would he unlock the... What? Why would he run in there? Wow, Callum. See, I told you you were bitch made. Press right click to shout to Callum. Wait up there for mommy, Callum. Come on, this way. Where's this way? Callum, where are you going? Come on, mommy. Oh, there you are. Why can't you wait for your mommy? Don't you ever want to wait for your mommy? There's something special about the entrance to an amusement Bro, I'm park. your mommy. A line Whatever, drawn between the real world and the world of whimsy within. Kids these days, right? On this side. The apathy of our everyday lives. And on the other, anything we might dare to dream. It's no wonder Callum ran back inside. I wouldn't want to leave either. Typical Gen Z kid don't want to listen to me, huh? Have a safe journey home. Nah, he might be a generation alpha. That's what Mason is. Wait, Wait let me mommy, call out to Callum. Callum. This way, mommy. What is happening? The heck? Whoa, 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 whoa. What's my complimentary horror game flashlight? What is going on, everybody? I don't like that. It got so dark and spooky. Oh, shit. So this is where the horror begins. Oh, God. The park. What happened here? Thank Buddha I can run. Okay. You can catch me. Oh, yeah? Watch this. I got mommy strength. Y'all ever heard about mom strength? That's not a myth. Like, there's... There's some moms out there that really be doing, like, some superhuman type stuff. Let Come me see back. what that mouth really does real quick. Hold up. Dumbass birds. Callum, stay where you are! Carrie Killian is Satan's whore. Wow. What the heck? Okay. I don't know who wrote that, but I got a shotty in the car that I am not afraid to use. I am not afraid hey, to chick chuck that thing one time. Examine Over stone. Here. Oh, shoot. I think this belongs to Callum. Yep. Little size threes. That's the thing that I saw. This uh, squirrel thing. Chad the chipmunk, huh? Just a drunk guy in a suit. I'm about to get chased by something called Chad. Are you kidding me? Okay, how do I get out of here? Please. It's enough. Come out, sweetie. Catch me, mommy. Okay, we don't have time for this. What like, we gotta this go home. About? Purchase the land on Solomon Island for a pittance. I might add. Whatever old Archie Henderson did to the locals, the mention of his name had people slamming doors and locking shutters from the moment I arrived on the island. My lawyers had arranged everything in advance, but the realtor still had to come and deliver the keys to me personally. He took it upon himself to offer me another warning. I don't know what you're planning to do with this land, Mr. Winter, but the soil here is bitter with a curse carried from the old country. Old man Henderson, he did dark, terrible things. The land remembers, sir. I dismissed him shortly afterwards, mostly amused by his pathetic attempts at warning me off. I had a great vision for this place and the will to see that vision through the very end. Atlantic Island Park. The name is perfect and I cannot imagine it being anything else. This is the start of something amazing. It better be, because right now it's the start of something boring as shit. But it said that the park remembers. Does this park remember that I don't give a fuck? Okay, where is Callum? Where is over here, Callum? Where are you? Over here. Oh. 
Over there? Okay. Callum, I'm coming. Stay where you are. I'm coming, my boy. Man, this kid, dude. Whose kid is this? This is ridiculous, everybody. I came here for the bear. I'm just here for a good time, not a long time, all right? And I already know that the first jump scare is going to happen. This does remind me of Disneyland, though. It's a small world after all. <laughs> it's a small world. I'm going to get copyrighted. I already know I'm going to get copyrighted. Let me shut up. Let me shut my whole ass up. Alan, Callum, why did you go? Did you go? Near did you go? a great forest, there lived a poor woodcutter. His wife and his two children. He's gonna kill the a kids, boy isn't he? Named with the axe. Hansel and a girl named Gretel. I'm calling her right they now. They were very poor and had very little to bite or sup. Sup? Sup, dog? Oh, look. What See, he's still wielding the axe. Us? The woodcutter asked his wife one night. I tell you what, husband, we will take the children into the thickest part of the forest tomorrow and abandon them there. No, my wife, What's I that? cannot do that, said the man. Then we will all four starve, you fool. Oh, this is kind of creepy. Hansel and Gretel like the overheard time, their parents talking and Gretel began to weep. Do not fret, Gretel, Hansel said. He crept out of the hut and gathered white stones from the ground to fill his pockets. Nice. Got some ammo, just in case. Just in case we have to throw that fudge off. The next morning, the woodcutter leads the children into the forest. Before they leave, their mother gives them a slice of bread and warns them that they will get no more food oh. that day. Oh, shit. What you looking Clever at? Clever Hansel Chad? leaves a trail of white stones Bro. behind them as they on, pass Chad. into the woods. That's not very Chad. When their father leaves like that, them, Chad. the children wait a while, then follow the trail back to their parents' house. Don't be looking at me with those baby reds. Calm down. I can't even turn my head the whole way. After receiving a thorough scolding from their parents for getting lost in the woods, the children are sent to bed without any supper. No more bread? Hansel tried to but sneak I gotta get this and bread. collect more white stones, but found that the door was locked. Tomorrow I will take them into the woods myself, the wife told the woodcutter. The wife really wants to kill kids. Wow. Who would have thunk? In the morning, their mother gave them a slice of bread and led them deep into Where's the Chad? forest once again. Oh shit. Yo, Chad, I think you're cute. I think you're so cute, Chad. Please leave me alone. Hansel broke his bread into pieces and left a trail of breadcrumbs to lead them safely home. But hungry-eyed birds snatched up the breadcrumbs Chad and is his in the trail water, was think. destroyed. Chad's in the water getting litty real quick. Abandoned by their parents and unable to find the trail home, the children wandered in the forest for three days. That's it? I would have done four at least. Come on, man. Put me in those times. I would have at least survived in the forest for five straight days. The children stumbled into a clearing with an exceedingly strange house. Its walls were made of gingerbread, and its windows were panes of clear sugar. Hansel, desperately hungry, ran forward and began to nibble on the walls. Calm down, kid. Act like you've eaten before. Nibbling on walls? Like, wait your turn. Little mouse, who is nibbling at my house? That sounds so weird. An old woman emerged Never do that again. from the house, sniffing the air and peering around with cloudy eyes. Oh, you dear children, who brought you here? Just come in and stay with me. Why am I listening no to a story of Hansel and Gretel? You. Give me my freaking son back. But Hansel and Gretel stayed back. For the old woman reminded them of their cruel mother. This is cruel. Come, children, don't be afraid. I have something for you. Why the would old you trust woman that? offered them two enormous lollipops. The children took them and began to eat. I guess in the 1700s you, you see, didn't have common sense. Nothing to fear here. Come inside. The old woman urged, and the children, still licking their sweets, followed. Where is that Chad? Yeah, I can't believe I'm listening to a whole story. Once oh, inside the house, the old woman changed. Oh, suck me, fuck she me, senpai. I think Chad's right behind me. And put Gretel to work, sweeping and cleaning. 
cleaning her hut. Your brother yeah, will make behind a good me. He's marrying these ass cheeks. The old witch told Gretel. Once he is fattened up, I shall feast upon him. Okay. Do you all know the story of Hansel and Gretel? Raise your hand if you do, Time because we do not need to be knowing this shit. Poor Hansel refused to eat, fearing the day that the witch would eat him. The witch, for her part, grew impatient. Today, I will cook and eat your brother, Gretel. Climb inside and light the oven. Climb inside but Gretel and light the pretended oven. not to understand. Uh, I do not know how. Where is the opening? Fool! The old witch said, the opening is here. And she moved to show Gretel. Seizing her courage, brave Gretel gave the witch yeah. a shove. And the old crone yeah, tumbled Gretel. forward. Oh into shit, the oven. wanted for murder. That's first a degree. Gretel bolt over the door to the oven. Gretel yeah. freed her brother Hansel. She almost cooked the and high heels too. They lit a fire beneath Fuck the oven. that witch. And though she screamed and begged, the children sat by the oven until her screams had stilled, and the witch was cooked. Barbecue chicken, that ass. You know, marinate that thing with some honey and barbecue. Then, because even children oh. can't survive on sweets. Come on, kids. They divided up the body of the old witch like I said, act like and an ate before. her. Shit! God damn! One of them was holding the spine too. Holy crap! Those kids, man. Bad kids. They, they were worse in the 1600s or whatever that was. Where's Callum? Oh, what are you doing? Turn that head back around. Don't be looking at me like that. I'll report you. I'll report you to proper park authorities. Swear on my mom. I mean, I'm a mom myself, but I swear on another mom. I swear on somebody's mom. Callum! I don't want to be sitting here awkwardly talking to this random ass duck thing. This game is kind of ridiculous, everybody. Like, my back hurts from carrying this shit right now. But it says swans, gingerbread, and chocolate. Lies. I saw no such thing as chocolate. I saw the swans, the gingerbread, and... There's my boy. That's Hansel I saw. and Gretel. I used to read it to Callum when the electricity was shut off. Mm. Those poor children. The whole world against them. The forest. The birds. The old witch. Even their own parents. The parents. I used to imagine that Callum and I parents. were the kids in that story. Not mother and son, but brother and sister, hand in hand against the unkind world. We were always hungry, looking for our own house made of candy, looking for the sweetness that could take the pain away. Hunger leads people to desperate, terrible places where the tree branches reach like claws. Ever since I've become a dad, I was kind of thinking about like my relationship with my own son. And I was thinking about how I treat him now I treat him more like a father because he needs me. He doesn't know any better. He's only about to be three years old. So he doesn't really... What? You want to say something? Then say it. Say it with your chest. Another accident. This place. Park maintenance. Just parallel parked on the side. What's this blood doing? Oh. Is that Mr. Bear? No, shout out Mr. Bear. Wait, what is happening? Despite the constant interruptions to work, Atlantic Island Park will be opening on time. The governor is booked to cut the ribbons, so the only real question is whether we will have any customers. I'm not truly worried. The customers will come out of simple curiosity. I deduced what was needed from the band writings of Archie Henderson. It's astonishing to think that a resonance of positive emotions can be used to fuel such a process. Henderson himself chose to use negative, and that caused some of the taint that still lingers in this place. I will not make his mistakes. Very soon I will know if this has all been for nothing. Is that Mr. Bear? Shout out Mr. Bear with that knife in his eye. I totally just saw that too. But yeah. Um, Alan, let me call why did Callum. you go? This way. Oh, now we're whispering? Okay. Mommy needs to see you, Callum. This way, Mommy. Okay, whatever. But yeah, like I said, I was thinking about my relationship with my own son. Right now, I need to be like that father figure, that leader. Can you stop interrupting me, game? I'm trying to tell my people about how I'm raising my own son. Damn. But yeah, uh, right now, I need to be like more of a father figure. I need to teach him the rights and wrongs. You know, how to, you know, properly do things. But I was thinking about how I am with my own parents. And the older we get... Uh, tell me if I'm wrong about this. I know a lot of people are way younger than me. But... As you get older, you start to have more like a 
friendship type of relationship with your parents. Like you can hang out with them or you can tell them certain things that you couldn't when you were a kid and things like that. Well, I mean, I'm assuming that, you know, people are close with their parents. If you're not close with your parents, is it more of like a, I'm the kid, they're a parent, you know, I just listen to what they say. Or, you know, I feel like the more friendship type of parent-kid relationship is better because sometimes a parent will tell you something, that doesn't mean that they're right. And it's up to the kid to be like, hey, you know what, mom or dad, you know, I see it as this way. I think this is the proper thing that we should do. And, and a parent, you know, if they don't have the an ego to them. Head. Make me dizzy. Yeah, ain't no way I'm writing that shit. I'll just be freaking throwing up all over the place. And another freaking note that I got to read. Snapped. Those poor kids. Okay, before I read this, I just want to, like, close my thought on what I was just saying. Don't you feel like... It's better when a parent doesn't have like an ego or like they don't have like a I'm right, you're wrong, you're the kid, I'm the parent. So that means I know more than you. Like sometimes kids, especially nowadays with social media and the internet and everything, you can learn and absorb so much information that you could like have the right idea and you could present it to your parents. And if they don't have that ego or that barrier where, you know, they think they're right all the time, they'll be like, you know what, you're right. Because I don't want to be right all the time. I want my son to think for himself when he's older. And we had that type of relationship where, yes, I'm the dad, but I'm, I can learn from him too. Like, you don't automatically know what it's like to be a parent once you have a kid. I did not know what to do with my own son when he was born. I, I didn't know anything. And you slowly learn along the way. It's like you crawl before you can walk. You walk before you can run. And I really do feel like when they're younger, especially your first child, you're more of like the parent authority figure. But as they get older, you start to develop a different type of relationship. It's like a special bond. And I want to have that with my own son. And I'm just saying that because I realized about myself that, you know, me and my parents, it went from like, yes, mom, yes, dad, to, oh, no, you know, I think this would be better or that would be better. And, you know, I'm at that age where me and my mom can just talk about anything in life. And it's beautiful. But yeah. Um, let me read this. I don't know. I went off and started talking about all that stuff. I guess because, I don't know. Like I said, I'm a parent now. So let me know what you all thought about that. Eyewitness report. Atlantic Island Park incident. Officer on duty, Sheriff F. Bannerman. Witness name, Creed Norma. Statement. We were waiting for our turn on the ride, Frank, me and the boys. This fellow in the chipmunk suit is making an ice carving while people took photographs. Lawrence wanted to go over to him, but I've always been a bit wary of those suits. They gave me the creeps. It's silly, I know. Anyway, the chipmunk man, he was carving and picking away at the ice, and at first, we thought he was making some animal, like a tiger or a lion, but as more and more ice fell away, when you first looked, it was like a human face smiling out of that block of ice. But the more you looked at it, the more you saw that there was something not quite right about the proportions Something unnatural that made your heart begin to beat just a little faster. Like you were prey and that thing in the ice was a hunter. But then these teenagers walked up and one of them made a face at the carving and said something rude to the guy in the chipmunk suit. And then, well, he went berserk. For a few moments, it was chaos. Everybody was running away from the guy who had one of the teenagers on the ground and he was stab, stab, stabbing with the ice pick. Who the hell writes that in the incident report? Stab, stab, stabbing? What is this, Coco Melon? And blood was spraying and people were screaming and Frank and I had the kids and we were dragging them away as fast as we could. And the last thing I saw before Frank dragged me away was that the eyeball of one of those poor kids had landed on the ice sculpture making the horrible creature look more or less alive. That's bullshit. I don't believe that for one second. I need to see that myself. I need some actual photos of the crime scene. But yeah, what I was saying before that witness report rudely interrupted me was... I really feel like the older you get, I feel like a special type of relationship you have with your parents is more of like a friendly vibe instead of like a parent-kid vibe. Like, you guys could hang out. Like, you could go to dinner with them or you could go watch a movie with oh, them. I think those I are the best. This. Yeah, that's me and Callum. Callum looks pissed to be my son. Actually, I look pissed to be his mom. Holy shit. What is this? Bro, that's the chipmunk that they tell you not to worry about? I'm not worried about that buck too, bitch. Wait. I think I need to stop that. Don't hide from me, Callum. Callum's gotta be on here. Let me ride this. I can't get on while it's moving. Oh, okay. You're right, you're right. Sorry. Let's decrease the speed. So what's the point of this? Honestly. Like, one of these better fly off the handle and I crash or something, because I need some excitement in my life, and this ain't it. 
This is not it. This is the first amusement park that I've ever been to that's boring as shit. This has got to be sponsored by NyQuil because I'm falling asleep. But yeah, I guess the Chad guy. Oh, what's up? What's up, baby? What's up, baby girl? I'm scared. Bro, I see scarier shit in the mirror. You can't play me like that. Dude thought he was really doing something. Ew. <laughs> you saw that face? Like, he really thought he was scary. Oh, my God. Okay. Like, they're really out here thinking that they're doing something with their lives. That's the funniest part. Is somebody there? Who the hell are you? Hey! You in the top hat! Who is that? Hold on, there's somebody right there. They better not have disappeared. If they disappeared, you all owe me money. Uh, somebody owes me money. The fuck? Okay. Don't hide from me, that Callum. so random. I wonder if that was supposed to happen or if that was an Easter egg. Because that was one of the most pointless things that I've ever seen in my Treachery sad, pathetic life. Treachery hides in thoughts. Treachery that lashes like a whip and scars our insides. The first time I saw Callum, my thoughts betrayed me. What's that? I looked down at this wrinkled, red, bawling thing and I thought, is that it? We build our world from expectations and the world that I had built for Callum was no different. He was so real, so there, and so far from my expectations. And they shattered, and as they fell in pieces, that one treacherous thought became a new foundation. All of the love that we shared, all of the warmth and goodness that followed, built on a single treacherous <gasps> thought. Oh! Whoa, that scared the shit out of me! Oh my god, bro! Okay, that is actually creepy as hell. I thought working in the park for a summer... Hold on, that gave me the chills. Look, chills that kill. Can anybody see the chills that actually kill? Or am I just doing this for no reason? And yes, I'm low-key flexing because I'm self-conscious, okay? I thought working in the park for a summer would be a lot of fun. But the end of season here really drags. I don't like that clicking noise. Stop it. There aren't... Stop. There aren't many tourists around, and most of the staff spend their days standing around gossiping. And most of that gossip is about Chad. I mean, Steve. See? Even I am starting to call him Chad. And I went to school with the guy. It's that goddamn suit. In the beginning, it was a laugh. Steve the local lush as Chad the chipmunk child-friendly mascot at Atlantic Island Park. What was... What? Is somebody moving in the back? Oh my goodness. I'm freaking myself out. But, um, uh, lock up your daughters and all that. But the more he wears that suit, the weirder Steve is getting. At first, it was little things, like refusing to change out of the suit at work and taking it home with him every day. But then I saw him at Susie's Diner, still wearing it, and it wasn't even a work day. Some of the staff complained to the park management about the smell, and I saw him walking and talking with Mr. Winter one day. But nothing seems to have changed. The suit still smells like a carcass whenever Steve walks by. And apparently Steve has picked up some new skills since the last time I saw him, puking up in a gutter outside Psych coil station because he sure as hell can carve a mean ice sculpture those shapes he makes in the ice though they give me the creeps steve came by the booth today and he just hung around for a while i couldn't really tell because of the suit but it seems like he was just staring at me sizing me up eye banging me whatever he was doing i asked him what he wanted and he just stood there not saying anything eventually i called my supervisor and when he came by chad steve wandered off my supervisor told me to put everything in writing, so here it is. Also, I quit. I don't want to see that chipmunk suit ever again. Laura Henman. Okay, so let's put this away. It's so hard to put Cow. things- ah! Okay. That actually scared the fuck out of me. Stop, Callum! Holy crap. Okay, that actually legitimately scared me. I think I almost had a back spasm looking at that. Look at that. That's creepy. How do I get in here? Can I? I can't. Oh, I don't like that jump scare. I actually don't like that Come one out, at all. Sweetie. Callum, we're going home. I've had enough. No, please. Okay. Thank goodness I didn't have to read that. I was about to just because, you know, I'm a little lore whore. Mother Duck said quack. Oh my goodness. Me and Mason sing that too. I always go quack, 
Quack, Constant quack, crashes and he's freaking dying all the time. He's like, ha ha ha. Guess it floats <laughs> someone's boat. Okay. Uh, Callum? Stop! Callum! Yo, Callie! Oh, I see. I see what's going on here. Hold on. That one's litty on me titties, mate. You want me to go to the one that's lit up? Right, Wait for oh! me! Come on, man! Don't distort it like that! Freaking me out for no reason. Examine accident report. Oh, more reading? Yay, my lucky day! Accident report. Employee named Francis Dufresne. Time and date of the accident incident, 25th of October, 1976. Job title and department. Laborers working on the crane. Supervisor, lead person, Richard Stapleton. Witness, Lawrence Creed, Michael Edgeworth? What? Edgy baby? Hold on. Edgy baby was a witness and probably the lawyer, right? Brief description of the accident or incident during the transport of the bumper cars into the arena. One of the straps attaching the load to the truck came untied, causing a cascade of bumper cars onto Francis, who was standing directing the driver. Francis was crushed by the weight of the cars. Describe any injuries caused. Francis was killed. <laughs> it's like, describe any injuries. And it's just like, yo, Francis got body, bro. Did the injured employee see a doctor? Yes. If yes, did you file an employer's portion of a worker's compensation form? Yes. Supervisor's comments. Dexter, the truck driver, claims to have seen someone on the back of the load undoing the straps. Nobody else reported seeing that. The sheriff has requested that Dexter provide them with urine samples. What could have been done to prevent this accident incident? Double checking of the straps after transit should be mandatory and drug screenings for all the drivers. Have the unsafe conditions been corrected? It said no. They're like, fuck this. Employee or supervisor signature, eligible signature on the 25th of October. The local laborers are very superstitious and this hasn't helped. Some of them are refusing to return to work until we have someone from the local church walk the park and exercise the spirits. <laughs> oh! Come on, man, stop doing that! The fuck's wrong with you? Oh yeah, here we go. Oh yeah, grab that bumper car. All right. That actually freaked me out. I did not appreciate that. Callum, why did you go? You see how calm she is? She remains calm. She is in a state of zen. She just witnessed that possessed car go over there and she was like, Callum, where are you, dear? Your spaghetti is getting cold. But yeah, thank you, bumper car, for leading me on the right path. Mommy is coming, Callum. I think I would be superstitious too if I saw that. Where are Callum. you? Callum! Callum! Callie! It's a matter, it's of, a public matter of public record. record that I am a failure as a mother. Don't say that. Once, when Callum was very small, do I left him asleep in the car while I ran an errand. Don't even remember what it was. Okay, yeah, that, that's a bad when move. I came that's back, a bad, bad move. The sheriff was standing next to the car, watching my boy through the window. I didn't like what I saw in his eyes. Judgment. I would judge you too. He wrote me the ticket without saying a word. Just the scratch, scratch of his pen on the notepad. When he gave it to me, our eyes met. I know what you're going through. My daughter, Helen, she just gets some help. Help was a bolt of lightning. Help was a thousand volts surging through my veins. Help is agony. I'd rather die. I wanted to scream. I'd rather you pulled your gun and shot me. That's giving me anxiety. But instead, my mouth said, I don't like seeing yes, that. Yes, Sheriff. I do not like seeing that. I would not go on a Ferris wheel in real life. Shout out to anybody who would, because you are a braver person than me. Continually delayed by the incompetence of the builders, the problem is that they are locals, and so they believe a lot of the rumors about what old man Henderson used to do here. Damn that old man Henderson, right? They grew up on those tales. Every time a bolt comes loose or a wrench goes missing, those fools are crossing themselves against the black magic. Of course, that is why I chose this site over all the other potentials. Solomon Island is a nexus for dark energies and the thought of all that power just dissipating beneath its earth here, it makes my skin crawl. I called in a few favors back in Brooklyn and got someone at the local academy to see if they had any interesting books about local history. Turns out they do and it turns out that old man Henderson has some pretty strong connections to the Brooklyn crowd. Perhaps something he wrote will help me find the piece of the plans that I am missing? Maybe. Stay where you are! Damn it, Callum! Why are you on this Ferris bullshit? Yeah, I would not go on this. 
This whole thing feels unnatural to me. Like, I'm not talking about the video game. I'm talking about, like, an actual Ferris wheel. I feel like we're not meant to be on these types of things. Like, look at that. That is actually legit giving me anxiety right now. Just looking up at it. Like, imagine if you're at the very top and the Ferris wheel just stops working. <laughs> I gave myself the chills to kill. Okay. So, let's decelerate this bad boy. There we go. Do it one more time for the homie DJ Screw. Because you got to. You always got to. I don't know what it is about the jump scares in this game. I guess because this game is so slow paced, it's like a slow burn, that when the jump scares do happen, I'm caught so off guard that I'm just like, yo, what in the fuck, mate? People come into your life for a reason. Dad it's used to say view, that though. before mom ran off. Not going to lie. After that, he mostly just drank. Things were different for Don and I. Who's Don? When we met, I was sweeping the floor oh, at Susie's diner. Callum's dad. He came in with some workers, but he didn't try to flirt or cop a feel like the others. Okay. He just ordered a coffee and sat there, watching me. When my shift was over, he offered to walk me home. I don't know how to describe that walk. We talked and laughed and eventually kissed. Huh. It felt like love. It felt like a fairy tale. I can't tell you if Callum was made that night or one of the ones that followed. I think it has to be that night. That one perfect night. Damn, bro. See Don and I moved you. in together, but then, well. See you, Don. He died. Don with the Don. According to the supervisor, his safety harness failed when he was working on the top of the Ferris wheel. Don was there one moment, and then gone. Oh, he died on this thing? Sometimes people leave your life for no reason. That's cold. That's a cold world. This is why I don't go on Ferris wheels. Fairy tale fucking over. That sucks. I feel like this thing's about to break. Uh-oh. Okay, so when she goes on things, she kind of like reminisces a little bit. What is that red stuff? That was weird. Is somebody gonna meet me at the bottom? Who? Who? Oh yeah, you? Oh, the top hat, man? All right, looking all snazzy. Yeah, you look scary, but where'd you get that at? You have that in a size 40? Shit. Size 40 large? All right. Damn. Left before I could even say goodbye. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, Callum. You heard me. You heard mommy. Where are you, Callum? Callum, come on, man. Yo, Callum, stop playing with the boy. I mean, your mom. Callum, you know where did what you I mean. go? A lot of people idolize their children. You hear them talking about their kids and just the way they talk? Their fucking voices make me want to vomit. Hey, I do that. My angel likes to read, and little Johnny is so good on the piano. Fuck those people! Hey, you fuck give you up too! Nine months of your life carrying them, you traumatize yourself giving birth to them, and then you spend the rest of your life as their slave, wiping asses, mopping a piss, feeding them, little life-sucking monsters who take and take and take until. Whoa. We all go insane. I wonder Callum was running Any away. Any parent who pretends otherwise is just dishonest. That's called choice supportive bias. I am honest. Callum really grinds my gears, and he owes me everything. Everything. It served the little fuck right if I just abandoned him. Oh, shit. Yo, this game just did a 180 because now I'm fully invested in this arc. I'm invested in the Psycho Mom arc right now. <laughs> I'm like, all right, yo, do your thing, girl. Talk your one. shit. Never got around to do it before. Why is that? I don't know. I can go on roller coasters that have like all the loops and all that, but ones that have like a humongous drop, like a heart attack drop, you got me fucked up. But yeah, the loops don't feel like anything. They really don't. It just feels like you're just kind of going straight the whole time with like a little bit of like a, like a boom, you know, like a pushback. I don't even know what to call it because I'm not a roller coaster connoisseur. Yeah, my boy! Snazzy! We, want? we need to talk about Callum. Oh. What do you mean? Damn, that's a long ass finger. Him? That shit veiny. I. That's insulting. You and your boy are everything that this place doesn't want. The antithesis of what we stand for. Yo, why you have a normal left Where hand, but your right one looks like Godzilla's dick? The poor child. He tried so hard to do what he was taught. He even left you a trail of breadcrumbs. But the park is just so hungry. You are literally right behind me, huh? Tell me where my son is. The witch has it now. 
has both of you. No happy ending here, I'm afraid. Just... just leave me alone. Fool. You always were. I'm a fool? At least I don't have a hook for a hand. Yeah. Oh, oh let's do it, let's do it! Whoa! <laughs> yeah, turn me up! Whoa. What was that? Oh, shit. Woo! Yeah, flick my nipples, baby! Come on now! Man, this roller coaster kind of sucks. Oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh, here we go, here we go. Hold on, hold on. Hands up again. Come on now. Where's that drop? Oh, that's a baby drop. That's a weak as shit drop. Oh, here we go. Whee! <laughs> said I can taste your demons? You can do that for real? Oh, shit, bro. We just ran over Callum. And we gave zero fucks. I'm with it, man. I'm with it. I'm down for anything in this game. Like, anything goes. Oh, he's gone. Alright. At least I don't have to see that meaty hook hand no more. That shit was veiny. I think it was throbbing, too. That was a throbbing Williams if I've ever seen one. But yeah, that dude was a little too close to me. I could feel his hot-ass breath on my neck. Um, where am I gonna go? Is he in here? No? Oh. Let me read this. It works! The calculations and adjustments worked. The transport and storage mechanisms seem to be flawless. What a wonderful day! If only these people knew what they were fueling. And so what if a few people leave the park at the end of the day feeling dour? So what if the children are more scared than excited on the roller coaster? This could be the doorway to immortality, and such doorways open only to those who have the will to find the key. Okay, so let's get out of here. We've read enough of that mumbo jumbo. So is this park haunted because it was built on some cursed land? Or did some messed up things happen to the lady we're playing as at this park? Who is that? Yo, who in the holy hell is that? Oh, okay. I thought there was somebody against the window. The witch awaits. The witch awaits? Wait, hold up. What witch? Hold on, now that I have a complimentary horror game flashlight, what witch? Can you tell me what we're Alan talking about? Has bruises on his arms, finger marks. Someone has been hurting him. I've asked him, demanded really, to know where he got the marks, but he doesn't want to answer me. Something has scared him into silence. He doesn't dare talk. He's been changing too. Something sinister lurks in the darkness behind his eyes. I catch him staring at me at odd moments. In the night. He tosses and turns and cries out words that I cannot understand. Where do I go? When I try to soothe him, he snaps and bites at my fingers. I think he wants to talk to me. I think he wants to tell me. Wait. But they are watching him every minute of every day. I think I've been they here. are whispering to him in his sleep, changing him. They are taking my baby away from me. I can't save him. There will be pain. But I love him, and in the end, he will understand why. Okay, so I have two theories about this game so far. One, Callum's already dead. Two, Callum never existed. Or three, I don't know what I'm talking about. Those are the only two theories that I think are happening. Something probably already happened to Callum, or Callum was never existing in this world. I was trying to word that properly. But yeah, I think I'm right. But well, we'll see. Like, I know it looks like I don't pay attention when I'm talking shit throughout the games that I play. But I actually do try to understand things for the most part. But sometimes when I am talking, you know, I do forget some key moments. And I did go the wrong way again, bro. See, I should have trusted my whole instincts because this is where I originally went. But now... Oh, I'm not reading this. I'm not reading this. The gates closed behind me. Yeah, this shit is haunted as fuck. The whole town was shocked by that one. Never found out who did it. Should I read Callum, that? Where are you? I guess I can't read it. Follow the breadcrumbs. Follow the breadcrumbs? What am I, a bird? Okay. What is that? Laughing clowns. Put your balls in our mouth. Wow. Okay. Yo, shout out these clowns, bro. Really with the shits. Talking about putting balls in their mouths. Like, come on, dude. What is this? What is happening here? What the fuck? Okay, who's that? Oh bastard. 
Who did this to him? What in the phasmophobia? Who is that? Um, I'm just casually gonna be like, who did this to him? Oh my! Hey, the jump scares are getting me. The jump scares are getting your girl. And yes, I said your girl because don't forget, I'm a mother. I'm a single mother. Come back! All right, we gotta go. I don't know where we're going, but we can't stay here. Let me through. I'm not playing anymore, Callum. I've been done playing. I'm not playing games. Fuck. I had a feeling once I turned around something weird was going to happen. And I didn't see this before. The, these are mine. Flags pharmacy. What is that? What is that? Hold on. I'm a G small so wait. Couldn't even see what that was. Whoa. Fuck gravity. Yeah. I hate gravity. Don't force me to do things I don't want. Whoa. Trippy bro. Okay. You don't want me to go here? All right. You got it. What about that corpse that was here? Corpse gang. Okay. Let's go this way. Because that person told me to turn around. Bop. Oh. Don't touch me. You don't touch me. Future Times by Laurel and Hootie. Oh, I don't care about this. Callum? Where are you? Oh, even the person with the drip is gone. Oh God, no. All right, I'm confused. And I know after I said that, people are going to be like, Jay, 10 minutes ago, I pay attention even though I talk the most shit. Jay, now. I'm confused. I see those comments all the time. Shout out to those people. I love you all. I love you all for paying more attention than me. The park is a collage of contradictions all of its own. Millions of people die every year in car crashes. And the park has little cars designed specifically to simulate that action. Hear the children scream with joy. In the sideshow alley, you can walk away with 15 cents worth of mass-produced Chinese teddy bears while a grinning carny pockets your hard-earned five dollars. That's facts. And what it's secrets hard lie facts. beneath the sullen waters of the lake? The tears of jilted lovers, the soiled condoms of illicit affairs, the clotted blood of the lonely suicide. And the face of the witch looms over it all. I always despised a toothy it, right? grin and warty nose. I hate that sparkle in her weathered, watchful eyes. We're really about to figure I out what this Callum mouth has been doing this whole time. Inside. Okay, I guess we're really gonna go in the back of the throat, right? How do I turn on my flashlight? Oh, it's already on. Okay, it's already activated. House of Horrors. Oh shit. Oh man, this is weird. I don't like how creepy this is already. Let me read this. Atlantic Island Park has closed its gates. A jeering throng of townfolk gathered as we hung the heavy iron padlock on the gates. Small-minded fools, scared of what they don't understand. My machines lie silent and dejected, but I am not beaten. I have sent my wife and son back to Boston. I have retreated here to the House of Horrors, I must think. You sent them to Boston? So you sent them to the House of Horrors twice? I'm kidding, Boston people. Don't kill me. I like Boston. Boston's cute. Is that me? Hey, shout out me. Shout out me. Mwah. Self-love. Whoa! What have you done with him? <laughs> oh, wow. The freaking guns, too? Alright. Well, now that I know stuff like this is coming, I'm not gonna be scared. What? I'm not gonna be scared, everybody. I'm just gonna take it. Take it like a champ. Oh, yeah? The big bad gargoyle thing? Funny. That's cute. Holy crap. I'm nervous. I'm a little bit nervous. Oh. All right. Oh. Why have you dealt with him? Why did you steal me? Why did you steal me? What are you talking about? I don't even know you like that, kid. Don't be talking about stealing. Oh, man. 
more jump scares, please. No mas. No mas, por favor. I can't take this no more. Oh, shit. Where do I go? Hmm. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, oh, boy, everybody. <laughs> uh, I'm not trying to mess with these jump scares no more. Like, stop it. Leave me alone. Oh, God. What is this? What the fuck? What is going on here? Is this a random room? That doesn't make any sense. Did I just go in a circle? <gasps> I think I might have thrown my ass in a circle. Hold on. Okay. I thought maybe somebody was behind me. Yeah, let me get out of here, everybody. Please. Make me see. What the heck? Bro. <sighs> Behind me. <gasps> okay. Bro said boo. Made my nipples hard. Oh, fuck. Bro said boo and my nipples went straight to hard mode. Fuck. Okay. Freaking. Uh <laughs> <laughs> my face oh man one little dog went out where is my boy no okay where do you want me to go do i open this oh oh okay shape shifting rooms got it that's locked so is that? Callum! Don't leave me! It's not funny anymore. Let's go! After they let me out, they gave me Callum back and sent me home with a handful of breadcrumbs. Home bit a sweet home. I barely recognized it. Where there had been color and light, there were shadows and regrets. Where there had been warmth, there was a bone deep coldness that never went away. I tried my hardest to keep the ghosts at bay. Don, watching from the dusty corners while I tried to teach his son to read. My father, coldly assessing me and finding me lacking. I devoted myself to Callum and did the things that they told me. It will get better, they said. Every day will be a little better than the last. I'm in the woods now. Get the fuck out of this. Lost and afraid. Things never got any better. The wilting? What's this? It's a novel... Cementer places one of the most important science fiction writers of our generation. A solar flare has struck the earth. Millions of people uprooted from their homes. Okay, so I was reading about that Donner thing as she was talking. And I guess like during a harsh winter in like the 1800s, a family, I guess, was stranded. And they were forced to eat each other. That shit is interesting to me. I mean, not the fact that they had to eat each other, but like what you will do to survive. Stuff like that always interests me. Like survival stories. Oh crap. I feel like there's a big jump scare waiting to happen. Yeah? Yes, no, maybe so. Miss Maylord, as we agreed in our meeting today, we consider you fully recovered from your illness. This letter is official notification that you are considered sound of mind and body and may return to work at any time. Please note that you should discontinue any medication that you have been using and dispose of any remaining medicines. If you feel at any time that you are suffering a relapse, then please make contact with your local physician immediately. We wish you continued good health. Dr. Spencer Dunwich Medical. Okay. It's really hard to um, like put down the notes for me for some reason because I feel so dumb. But let me read this as well. I received your letter and I'm quite surprised. You ran off with your father all those years ago, then disappeared off the edge of the map. And then when I finally tracked you down, refused to answer any of my letters. And now you write to me asking for help. I have another family now and another life. Your father was a horrible man and I regret the years that I wasted with him. I loved you, I truly did, but every year you grew more and more like him. You were his girl. Never really mine. Still, I would have fought for custody if you hadn't run away with him. It broke my heart, but I needed to go on living. I can't let you back into my life without picking open old wounds. I'm sorry, Lorraine, but I just can't do it. Maybe one day it will be easier and I can meet Callum, but not yet. I am not ready to forgive you. Please don't contact me again, Karen. Okay, you know what I think? 
This is what I think is going on. Unless I get jump scared right now. But what I think is happening is maybe... Oh, man. I have to read one more. Miss Mallard, our inquiry into the state of Mr. Donner Williams has been completed. We will get to inform you that the primary beneficiaries of his estate, including the life insurance settlement for accidental death, were listed as Rose Williams and Richard Williams of New York State, the deceased parents. Our agency made contact with Mr. and Mrs. Williams and explain your situation, especially as regards the birth of Donald's son, Callum. Unfortunately, they were not receptive to our overtures, and they specified that without any legal proof of a biological relationship, they consider you ineligible to receive any of the monies from Donald's estate. They have asked that we no longer contact them regarding this matter. I understand that this may have a negative impact on your current financial situation, and I hope that I'm not being too forward when I enclose the bill for our services with this letter. Sincerely, Edward Stapleton, attorney. Okay, I think I know what's going on. What have you done with him? So my theories have gone out the window about Callum not existing and Callum being dead. What I think happened now is that Lorraine, the person we are playing as, um, she just went through so much. Jesus. She went through so much trauma because, listen, she had a relationship with Donald and then they fell in love instantly. She said it was a fairy tale. And then after that, yeah, um, after that fairy tale happened, uh, Donald died and then she was carrying his son so she just felt torn apart once Callum was born I guess because maybe Callum reminded her of Donald and she hated what happened to Donald because their relationship was new they're supposed to live happily ever after and maybe she kind of punishes Callum for that maybe she punishes Callum for the fact that Donald died even though Callum has nothing to do with Donald's death but that's what I think is happening now and that's why Maybe she had like postpartum depression as well. You know, that ha that's a common thing that happens with newly born mothers. And she just went through a whole bunch of things. It was like a whirlwind of all these things happening. And that's why she's in the state that she's in right now. Lorraine, things aren't right between us at the moment. I know. I want to try to and explain it. I think it's because I am so far from home and I am working so hard. Every day working at the park, it gets worse. Like a spring inside my mind. Winding tighter and tighter and tighter. When we go for drinks after work, it gets a little bit better. The guys relax and we laugh and we're, we're good people again. I don't want to come home to you without being in my right mind. But when this job is done, we need to get out of this place. We need to go back to the city where I don't feel like this anymore, Donald. So I guess she's kind of like back at the amusement park that Donald died at. And she's kind of reliving all this stuff. But this is the same thing. The Donner thing. No, this is Holodomor. What the fuck is that? In the spring of 1933 in the Soviet Ukraine, an entire population found themselves without food. Over the course of the coming months, the situation grew critical and reports of mass malnutrition began to filter into the upper echelons of the government. Okay, so I think that also Lorraine is struggling with money. She's kind of like beating herself up because Callum doesn't have like food and stuff to eat. What is going on there? Is that Callum? Leave that me is him. alone! That is Callum. Hold on. Hey! Get off! See, it's so hard to put shit like this down. There you go. Callum! Yo, easy cow! All right. Show yourself. And then maybe Callum doesn't really like the mom anymore like that. I think that's what's going on, everybody. I think I'm right on the money. Because we've heard multiple stories already. Multiple stories of, like, malnutrition or kids not having food. I didn't run away. Dad took me. Yeah. So... You, you know when you're a kid I'm scared right now so I can't even form a sentence properly but yeah when you're a kid you don't have a choice you have to go with the parent you can't be like yes or no at least back in those days an inquiry into the state of Mr. Don Williams has been completed okay we saw that one so now we're pretty much just going in a PT style loop but yeah everybody just to sum it all up I think I'm right on the money so Lorraine was going through some shit and Donald died. They didn't have enough money. As a single parent, she didn't have enough money. So she tried to see if, you know, maybe she can get some of the money that Donald might have left behind from his death. But she couldn't get any of that money. It went to the deceased parents of Donald. And now her and Callum don't really have anything. I think that's the story. And maybe she hates herself for it. But I think she's also taking it out on Callum. And then I don't know who this mascot is. Maybe she's having visions of seeing that person to kind of maybe like blame it on them like the big bad man in the hat 
Oh boy. Something's gonna pop out of me. What is happening? There's a bunch of hanging dolls over here. I don't like this. Oh, fuck. Oh, this is creepy, dude. That's Callum's bloody hat. That looked like Clementine's hat. Yo, Clem, where you at? She would solve this. If Clem was here, she would solve the hell out of this. Oh. What? Okay. Oh, God. Stop! Yo. Relax. Oh my goodness, bro. What is going on? I love... I love what? Did it say I love cats? It said something weird. Okay, now you don't want to open? Bitch. You bitch made. Why is it quiet? Why is it quiet? Oh, shit. What is this? The House of Horrors Stories again? Stories are told again and again. And from their shape, we build our understanding of the world. Two children are led into the woods. They are lost for a time, but then are captured by an old witch. Uh -huh. A child goes missing in Atlantic Island Park. He wanders lost for a time before finding his way into the mouth of an old witch. In the oldest version of this story, the mother and the witch were the same person. I never wanted to be the witch, but I am, aren't I? Kids broke in today. It has been so long since I heard laughter, so very long. I took one of them, I couldn't help myself. It was fast, the others didn't notice. I liked hearing him laugh, the boy from the academy. I put him on a slab. I tickled him until he couldn't breathe. My machines came to life, whirring in time to his gasps and shrieks. I think this is delightful. The change wrought in me by the machines is not yet complete. There must be other children I can lay on my slab. Who wrote that? Did Lorraine write that? Yo, Lorraine, what are you getting into? This story did get a lot more interesting as the game went on. I will say that. I will admit that, everybody. But in the beginning, I was kind of like, what? The fuck are you talking about? Eyes without sparkle. Huh. So that kind of feeds into my theory of her kind of not really caring for Callum like that. Because um, because of what happened to Dawn. Maybe she hates herself for it, just taking it out on the kid. Not that that's right, I'm just saying. Hansel and Gretel. I like secret bookcases. I'm a fan. What is this? Bro, this is a big ass park. Cal. I mean, most parks are. Cal. Let me take my thought back. <laughs> Sure, does that evil Squidward? Huh. What? Where'd you get that from? Relax with that. He ain't Dracula. This does not need to happen. Do I have a say in this? I'm the player. Okay. I think I'm missing something. Was that a quick time event? Did I fail? Tell me there's more. Okay. Hey, Lorraine. Lorraine. Don't blame yourself, Lorraine. People lose things all the time. Did 
take a deep breath and think about the last place you saw your son. In my heart and mind, I always return to Atlantic Island Park. New theory. Since I just got done playing everything, it's all fresh in my mind. We went from start to finish. So, I think the police want to know what happened to Callum. So, they've been questioning her for a while. And she has a story and she has a theory. But I think that she's probably the one who actually killed Callum. And she did it maybe because she didn't want to be a mother anymore. That's my theory. That's my theory. I think that she thinks that the park is evil and there's something weird going on in the park and the energy of the park made her kill her son maybe not with like the i don't know what that was it looked like an ice pick at the very end when he was like on that slab and then it looked like the demon made her do it i think that she blames that for callum's death i think she knows exactly what happened to callum but i think that she's just saying that he's missing and the mom is the one who killed the kid that's my theory. And I guess I was right then because I said the kid either doesn't exist or the kid is already dead. So, yeah, I think my conclusion is that I think that the mom killed Callum because she did not want to be a mother to Callum anymore. And, you know, they were just going through so many problems and she kind of just wanted to, like, get rid of him. And she took him to the park. She thinks that the park has some kind of, like, evil energy behind it. And she killed Callum. I don't know. I could be completely wrong, though, but I want people in the comments to let me know what they thought about this. It started off slow, and I know I was joking around through it, but it started to get better as the story went on. It started to make a lot more sense, I guess, because a lot of pieces were just, like, here and there for you to read. But then as it came together, you're kind of like, oh... This story is actually a lot more interesting than I thought it was. So yeah, let me know what you all thought about the park in the comment section down below. But if you enjoyed this video anyway, make sure you give it one big fat like. And tell a friend today that Jay from the Cove Scouts is that dude!